I am here on Little Creek Base in Norfolk, Virginia, and we are here to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It comes out next week, but they have a free advanced screening going on this weekend, and we are going to check it out, give you an advanced review, and tell you how it is. So Peter Quill and the gang are back in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and this time they've brought Nebula, Mantis, and Yondu with them to deal with a threat kind of on three fronts. We've got the threat of Aisha and the Sovereign, uh, you know, the, the golden perfect beings um, that, that are hunting them throughout the galaxy. You've also got Yondu dealing with the Ravagers and what's going on there. And on the third front, you have the story of what exactly is going on with Peter's father, played by Kurt Russell in this movie, um, who plays Ego, who comic fans know as the Living Planet. So, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 takes on a very Empire Strikes Back structure, in that it splits the parties into the different stories. Um, the, the, the story of Aisha hunt and the Sovereign, sovereign hunting um, the Guardians is kind of ever-present. Meanwhile, Peter... Gamora and Drax kind of go off to deal with ego and and understand what's the mystery you know why did why did Kurt Russell's character abandon Peter Quill as a child and and what is his birthright um, meanwhile Rocket Raccoon Baby Groot and Nebula uh, are dealing with Yondu and the Ravagers and kind of a Ravager mutiny going on based on something that uh, based on basically the fact that Yondu has gone soft on Peter Quill and the Ravagers are ready to take over. So, by splitting the party, you get two different stories going on uh, to mixed effect, I will say. Uh, you know, the, the story with Rocket Raccoon and Baby Groot with Yondu, I found a lot more interesting. Actually, probably a lot more, actually, a lot more heartfelt, even, even though it was dealing with the fact, that, even though Peter's story is dealing with the fact that he's meeting his father, I felt like the Rocket Raccoon and Yondu was a bit more, and the Baby Groot obviously had, um, actually had a bit more uh, emotional beats to it. Um, that being said, uh, you know, the, the stories obviously converge at some point. But uh, lots of stuff is going on in this film, and the fact that Peter Quill's storyline with Ego the Living Planet I found significantly less interesting um, than the other story going on. In fact, if I were uh, being honest with you guys, I would say that about, I don't know, about an hour and a half into the film, about an hour, I would say, into the film, I was watching it and I was thinking to myself, when are they going to introduce the main villain? When is, when is the main story going to start? Because it didn't feel like the ego um, aspects of it were actually the main storyline, but it turns out, it is, um, you know, the the, the, the storylines that I told you are the main story threads throughout the entire Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, if you loved the original Guardians of the Galaxy, for better or worse, you're going to get that times 10. Um, I was a little worried when I saw the initial trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 that it was just going to say, hey, you know, people really liked that baby Groot thing, or people really liked when Drax laughs, or people really liked that 80s music, so let's go ahead and throw in some more of that. And to a certain extent, that is what Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is. If you liked Dancing Baby Groot, you have Dancing Baby Groot. If you like 80s music, they found a reason to have 80s music in almost every scene in this movie, whether it makes sense or not. Um, you know, if you like Drax laughing, Drax laughs a lot in this film. It's very much a, let's find those greatest hits things and, you know, um, kind of, you know, uh, burn them, no, I don't want to say burn them to death, but kind of like do them to death in this sequel because the, everything is done more than once. Uh, you know, the, the little bit about Rocket Raccoon being referred to as a rat or whatever in the first one, every single character refers to him as something in this one. He's a fox, he's a rat, he's a dog, he's a, you know, uh, a trash panda. You know, there, there's all sorts of things like that. Um, and again, for better or worse, if you love that stuff, you're going to get it in spades. It's a little tiring, um, and the joke runs its course far sooner than they are done telling the joke, I think. Um, Gardens of the Galaxy 2 is a great film. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, that being said, I do feel like it was a bit over... It was a bit forced. You know, whereas the first film felt a bit natural. Um, it felt like they were telling an adventure tale that had comedic bits to it, 
and and you know James Gunn is a, is a confident director, and he did such a stellar job interweaving these moments that were magic in the first one, and in the second one, there's some of that, but at the same time, once they realized something works, they just kept telling the same joke over and over, which was just a bit forced to me, um, and unfortunately, uh, Peter Quill's storyline with Ego uh, just didn't connect with me as much as I wanted it to. But that being said, the the Ravager stuff with Yondu, Yondu was a huge key player in this. Glad to see him back, uh, Michael Rooker playing that character. Um, I wish the film didn't devolve into a big CG blowout at the end. Um, Super-powered characters fighting each other, um, you know, flying across the sky, things being destroyed. It just it felt a bit out of place for a Guardians of the Galaxy film because one of the things that people embrace about these characters is their heart. And when you take away um, the human characters and replace them with CG characters, and I know Guardi I know Rocket and and um, Groot are CG characters, but when you play, you know, when you replace everything with giant CG creatures or a giant CG face, um, it takes away a bit of that human element to the conclusion, and I wish they hadn't have done that. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is due out in theaters on May 4th if you loved, the, or, yeah, May 4th. Uh, if you loved the original, you will like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It is a great film. It is not as good as the first. Um, but it is absolutely worth seeing, and despite the fact that uh, I'm, I'm complaining about the, the overuse of Baby Groot, he is adorable, and they do say he is adorable in the film, and they are right. Um, and so there's a lot to enjoy. Um, there's a lot of jokes that don't land. There's a lot of jokes that do land. You're still going to have fun, um, and I recommend seeing the theater on that big screen. So thank you guys for watching. Let us know your comments below, subscribe to the channel, there is a ton of stuff coming, and we will see you guys next time.